Hey guys, Mr. 3D Hero here. In today's video, I shall be talking to you about how to become top in the majority of your matches, either, either if you want to become number one, number two, or just general number three. So sit back, relax, and I hope you, you enjoy the rest of the video. So, to start off, becoming number one in the majority of your matches aren't easy. It does take time, it takes practice, and it does require you to actually have a bit of knowledge about weapons, loadouts, maps, titans, and the majority of skill gaps that you're going to be facing. Now for me personally when it comes down to becoming number one it's kind of like a switch for me. I can either be number one straight away um, simply by using a loadout that I'm quite familiar with or if I'm using a loadout that I'm not good with it will take me quite a bit of adjustment maybe about five to six games before I can then get better and competitive with a certain loadout. Now that's personally for me because me wise I played FPS games for quite a while Start stating back from Medal of Honor, Halo, Call of Duty, Destiny and now Titanfall. So I've had my fair share of different fights, different weapons and just different scenarios. So for, general, for a general tip from me, if you want to get better in majority of matches and say if you want to rank top, you need to understand how maps are, how maps are constructed. Each map will have different boots, that will have different actions, will have different players to react with different um, areas or area of denial that you need to focus on. So a prime example could be complex. Now complex is the type of map that although it's close quarters it requires you to have a versatile type of equipment. So I mean something like SMGs or assault rifles. Something that's quick and when it comes down to titans you're going to need something that is good for area denial so squatch or someone who's quick so Ronin. So you don't ideally want to be using, say, um, Legion, because Legion's too big and bulky, and although he, there are areas on Complex that you can use um, to rack down enough support fire, because he's so big and bulky, it makes your life a little bit more tougher. And if I see a Legion player on Complex, it's kind of making my day, because then all I have to do is play Ronin, get up close, face shift behind them, keep attacking them, and if they do manage to get me in a critical state, I just use nuclear injection and at that point there they won't be able to escape because they're too slow it's too crowded and generally I've won so that's kind of my kind of my tip but then you kind of have to like realize that on some maps like Eden Legion will play much better because it's more wide open and although there is cover it basically means that you have a better chance to lure players in to you and it allows you more freedom. So if I can play Legion, I'll have like second compartment with me. Um, when Ronin players then come in to try to close the gap, I'll shoot them with second compartment, point blank, shoot them two times. Um, by that time then, they'll have at least half health, finish them off with my other weapon, and then usually most um, Ronin players will, you, will try to use nuclear injection. I usually have um, an extra dash core on me for my Titan kit, back away, run off, and I take literally, um, little to no damage and thus I won that situation. So in many ways you kind of want to understand how each map play out and how they'll effectively play for if you're using a certain titan. Now if you can figure out which maps play perfectly for a titan you'll have a much easier time with reading enemy um, movements. Now don't worry about enemy loadouts because enemy loadouts all vary and some players are really good with certain loadouts some players aren't so it's quite easy for you to predict and basically rack up as much skills as you, yeah, as you possibly can but when it comes down to titans you need a titan that's able to reach high areas and low areas but he's also quick and versatile and you also need a titan kit that are versatile into countering other pilots attacking you and versatile in attacking say other titans that could be good in closing down areas so now another tip I also recommend that if you want to become number one in general is you always need to stay on the go as a general rule of thumb in Titanfall 2, you don't want to stay on the ground for too long. You kind of want to be staying either in the air or on top of rooftops or on the wall as much as you can. If you are going to be on the ground, make sure you are running. Don't walk, just generally be running. Because the moment you stand still for a brief few seconds, it only takes, say, an AI or a random enemy player to come on by and kill you. So generally, if you want to avoid getting so many deaths, you want to be staying on the go. And if you can, if you can also learn how to bunny hop and air strafe, learn to do that and stay in the air because it's quite a pain. 
and if you go up against an EPG player who's always in the air using grapple or using stim, they are also a pain and they are one of the best type of players they face against as they're great for learning but they're also difficult for taking on um, said enemies. So if you can learn how they move about, apply that to yourself and then you can use it for any type of weapon. Well, depending on the weapon you're using. So if you could be using SMG, then yeah, you'll, you'll probably be really good. If you use a Grenadier, then yeah. If you use an LMG, then it may require you a bit of time to practice with it. Um, so another I, another tip I also recommend is for you not, not to stay into areas for too long. Now, usually when you start off, or usually when you respawn into a match, you don't exactly want to go straight into the action. Ideally, you want to be going around. You want to be planning out your different routes you want to be taking. Now, if you know you've been in an area where heavy firefighters occur and your team keep, keep getting killed, don't go into that area again. Go the other way around. In many ways, flank. Uh, try and go behind them and try and be, go behind them quietly so that, in many ways, by the time you get to the whole group of enemy, you can start taking them out. Then your team, maybe, your team members can then push up with you and take out the other remaining team so that by the time you get, by the time the whole enemy are cleared within that section or area, it would then make it would then mean the enemy team would then try to push up back to you into that area. You'll be wait, you'll be ready and wait for them, and then you can repeat the process. But I but I only recommend you do that if you're getting killed repeatedly in the same area. Don't do it. You don't have to do it straight away, but I recommend that you at least go ahead and learn to flank as much as you can. And even if it means you have to go on your own, just do it whatsoever. So another tip I also recommend, that, and it's something that I truly mean recommend, is for you to play objective. Too many players I've seen on my team, or on the other teams, will be focusing on getting as much pilot kills as they can. But when it comes down to playing the objective, they won't focus on that, and that's one of the problems. Like, if you want to become number one, or within the top three, you need to focus on the objective. Now if you're playing attrition, the whole point of attrition is for you to wipe out the enemy forces. Okay, but it doesn't mean focus just on pilots. It basically means focus on the AI as well. AI will offer you points plus one up to plus five. Take those out, you gain points. Those points go towards your um, top score. The first one to 450 or 475 will become the winner. Now what you need to do is focus on the AI but also focus on the pilots as much as you can. If there's pilots in the area, take them out. If there's no pilots in the area but there's AI in the area, take them out. Do as much as you can, do as much damage as you can. When you're in your Titan, take out the AI and the pilots as much as you can. In many ways, play the objective as accordingly. It's the same with Bounty Hunter. The whole point of Bounty Hunter is take out AI, get money, deposit it, and keep doing this to reach end game score. But the problem with me is that I see too many players who will focus on killing the AI, but they won't deposit the money. So in the end of the match, I have around eight hundred and say nine um dollars that hasn't been deposited, or one thousand um dollars not deposited into the bank. Not only does that hurt your team, but it also means that the overall score is going to be different, and it also means that if they die, half of that profit of theirs goes to the enemy team. So in many ways, you're basically giving them a free win. So in general, if you want to become number one, focus on the main objective, at most. And my final tip is for you to use weapons that are, I would say not part of the meta, but use weapons that you're commonly good with. Now what I mean by this is using weapons such as the Vault or using the car. For example, now these two weaponry are considered SMGs, but they're versatile and good, with good damage and good, um, attachments and such for taking on close, medium and long distances. Ideally, if you're the type of person that just wants to get kills quite quickly, go with the car. If you're someone who likes to get kills but like to pick people off from long distances, use the vault. And this rule can be applied to either using the G2, the Hemlock, the R201, the um, Softball and all, all these type of weapons. Use all the weapons in the game as much as you can. Use them with different loadouts, different classes, different attachments until you get a good feel of them and then once you find the loadout, save that loadout for yourself and once you saved it, generally you have yourself an ideal loadout that will make you top rank. Right? If you watch some of my videos, you will have noticed that some of my um, clips, I'll be using a certain loadout. Either I'll be using my stim class with the car or the vault or I'll be using my, um, my sonar class 
with the R201 or G2 or Hemlock and I'll always be using that and I'll always be focusing on, on the objective, focusing on players, focusing on AI while also being versatile in how I do certain engagements. Now if you can learn to master your own weapon skills, your own loadout in total, becoming number one will just become a breeze. And now before I do end this video, there's one more thing I must say. Just practice. Like generally just practice a lot. The whole point of becoming number one isn't so that you can just pub stomp people, it's for you to actually learn from others. You need to learn from your own mistakes, but you need to learn from other players and how they do engagements. Watch other streamers and watch YouTubers and see how they go ahead and do it. That's how I generally learn. I tend to go on the Reddit forums and I tend to um, pay attention to other people and how they do engagements. Now if you can learn how to improve yourself, becoming number one will become just a, a simple switch of the button. And that's how I do it. Sometimes I become number one, sometimes I'm number two, sometimes I'm number three, sometimes I get terrible games and I'm not that great. But I don't generally all the time become number one. Unless I'm using my ideal setup and I'm in that mode. So if you want to get better in the game and become number one, just practice a lot and probably go back to this video every so often. So I do hope you enjoyed the rest, um, the rest of the video. If you did, leave a like for more. If you didn't, leave a dislike. And I hope to see you again soon.